Hi, I'm Atul and I'm an online tutor based in London right now. Hi, I'm Paul and I'm an online chemistry tutor based in Burma, Lancashire right now. Okay, so today we're going to have a look at a mass spectrometry exam question and tells us bromine has two isotopes, bromine 79, bromine 81, in equal abundance. And in a mass spectrometer, bromine forms ions with the formula Br2+. Sketch the patterns of peaks you would expect to see in the mass spectrum of a sample of bromine. So we know bromine Br2 will consist of the two different bromines atoms and I think the best way of demonstrating this is to do a sample space diagram as we'd say in maths and because one bromine atom is 79 the other is 81 and the other bromine that it's uh, forming a bond with could be 79 or 81 as well and then if we add them together then we'd get 162 for the two 81s 160 for the 81s add 79s if we put add here and for the two 79s we'd get 149 158 So we can see with twice the chance of getting the Br2 ion with a mass of 160 than we have of 158 or 162. So when we sketch the pattern of peaks, we'll do 158. Well, there's 25% chance of getting 158 mass so we'll draw a line 125 and then the same for 162 with a 1 in 4 chance of getting that and for 160 then with twice the chance or 2 out of 4 chance of getting 160 which is 50% and we put that there and that would be our sketch for the mass spectrum of Br2+. And then the next part of our question says a sample of xenon with a relative atomic mass 131.31 and the sample consists of four isotopes and the abundance of three of the isotopes are shown in table three and the data for one of the xenon isotopes is missing. Use the data to calculate the abundance of the isotope, the missing isotope, and calculate m, the mass number of the missing isotope, and show your working. So we know all these abundances, because their percentage abundances, have to add up to 100. So that's the first thing we can do. So 28 add 25 add 27 is 80 so you know the percentage abundance of our missing isotope must be 20 and then we have to work out its actual mass of that isotope so but we've given sort of the mean mass of all the isotopes so Bit like doing a mean mass in maths we know we've got 28 that weigh 129 so that would be the total mass for that isotope and we'd also get 25 that would weigh 131 129 there, I missed the 1 there, 29. Okay, thanks for pointing that out. And 27 
that weigh 132 and let's move this slightly on we have 20 that we don't know how much they weigh but let's call that x but we know if we divided all that by 100 then that would give us the average mass which is given in the question as 131.31 So quickly, and now it's just an algebra question. We've got to determine what x is. So the first we can do, thing we can do is times both sides by 100. So that would get rid of the 100 on this side. And we'd just be left and get rid of the decimal point on that side. And then if we work out everything apart from 20x, so we've got 28 times 129, add 25 times 131, add 27 times 132, that gives us 10,451 that's it so 13131 take 10451 then divided by 20 and we get 134 which seems a, a reasonable answer given the other isotope masses there. So we've calculated the abundance of the isotope to be 20 and the mass number of the missing isotope to be 134. Sounds good. Uh, just a couple of quick observations I suppose this is a it's a very interesting probability distribution function as well in some ways. 25%, uh, 50%, 25%. Uh, and this is great just to like a weighted average to find the, um, the weighted average formula to find the overall um, mass. Yeah, so. It is. It's just like a weighted mean mass calculation in maths. Mm. Brilliant. It's great. Great question to just exercise all those skills that uh, students would have learned at uh, GCSE maths and yeah, just to get that fluency. But it's a very useful, powerful tool to work these things out in chemistry as well. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Look forward to uh, yeah next uh, next bunch of videos. Okay. Thanks, Hassel. Bye. All right. Bye for now.